we leave behind all the preliminaries and today we will start talking about actual computation. And we will start out with a br very brief discussion of a classical computer in order to be able to contrast that later on with the working of a quantum computer. Put very, very simply, a classical computer is a device, something, a machine that receives input. That input is classical information. And it can relate to anything. It can be data, it can be instructions, the program, uh, instructions for what the machine is supposed to do. And this classical information input is represented by symbols. In principle, it's any finite alphabet can do, but commonly um, one uses classical bits, zeros and ones. That's the input that goes into the machine, which processes this input according to some set of rules, and then spits out an output, the result of the calculation, which is again commonly represented as a sequence of bits. There's one basic distinction for a computer, and the computer can be deterministic, meaning that um, we, we, if you input the same information several times, you let the machine run several times with the same input, the machine will always go through the same intermediate states and will always produce the same output. If that is the case, then the computer is deterministic. It could be that a machine produces different outputs for the same input um, with certain probabilities, or that it goes through different internal states before it produces the output, and that may lead to differing run times each time I run this machine. If that is the case, then the computer is probabilistic. Now the typical computer that you can buy in the store and your laptop is, as far as the hardware is concerned, is a deterministic machine. Even though there exist algorithms which um, on purpose introduce randomness in the algorithm. Um, like the, the Monte Carlo algorithm. But the underlying hardware in general is, is working in a deterministic fashion. If you neglect errors, which of course may always occur with a certain probability, um, but so if the ideal machine runs deterministically. When we stick now to the de deterministic case, when we assume a deterministic computer, then the each output cube uh, output bit is a unique function of the input. So every single bit in the output can be written as a function of the input bit string. So there exists a function which maps the input bit string to a unique output bit, and that's true for every single output bit. Now, if we denote the, the length of the input bit string by n, then this is a function f um, from the power set sort of comprising sort of 0, 1 for each input bit to the power n. So these, these are the n input bits to one output bit. Let me show you an example of such a function. You have two input bits, x1 and x2, and there are four different possible combinations. And for each combination, the output bit has a certain value according to this function. So here, this little table shows you um, one very simple example. 
Now, one very fundamental result of classical logic is that any such function can always be built from elementary logic operations, from elementary logic gates. So this particular function, for example, can always be written uh, in this form with these logical operations. So this little hook in front of the x1 or x2, that's a negation, that's a not. What looks like a v, that's the, the logical or, and what looks like a, uh, an inverted v, that's the logical and. And you can convince yourself that this combination of logical operations on the right hand side actually gives the correct value for the Boolean function for each possible input. One says that these logical operations constitute a universal set. Yeah, so this means that any Boolean function can be built from these logical operations only. And this further implies that every deterministic classical machine can be built from these logical operations only. And each individual logical operations in, in operation involves only one bit or two bits at a time. Yeah, the logical and, the logical or involve two bits, the, the logical negation, just a single bit. You should note that there is hidden in this um, result an implicit assumption which we take for granted because it seems so natural, but it will turn out that it's actually not trivial as soon as we move on to the quantum case. You see that the various input bits, they feature in different places in this expression on the right-hand side. And so we are assuming that we can input a given bit multiple times into in multiple logical gates or operations. So this presupposes that it's no problem to copy a bit and then to input it in various places. This is an assumption which will turn out to be problematic in the quantum case. We just said that uh, classically these three logical operations and, or, and negation, they form a universal set. It, this universal set can actually be made even smaller. There exists a universal set that consists of a single logical operation only, and that is the, the NAND gate. The NAND gate, that's a logical AND followed by a negation. All the, the three other logical operations that previously formed the uh, universal set, each of them can be implemented with NANDs only. For example, a logical N can be constructed from three NANDs. It's, uh, you take twice NAND of the two input um, bits, and then you take the NAND of the respective uh, results. Uh, so let's say uh, the two input bits are both one, then on the right-hand side, the NAND applied to one one, where the AND gives a one and then the negation gives a zero that applies for both NANDs inside the bracket. And then zero and zero is zero and a negation applied to that is a one. So indeed one and one gives one. You can check that for all the other combinations. How would you represent uh, the, the logical OR with NANDs? Looks similar to the previous expression for the logical AND, only that um, the, um, the arguments, the two NANDs inside the bracket are in the first case x1, x1, in the second case x2, x2. And you can check for yourself that this again reproduces the logical OR.
And finally, the negation, the logical, logical negation. Um, again, I skipped the quiz here. This is just the same. Basically, you copy the bit and then use the two copies as inputs of your NAND gate. And the result is the negation of X. So there exists classically uh, a universal set that consists of a single type of gate only, namely the NAND gate. So in fact, the um, circuits inside a computer, a CPU or any other processing unit um, is composed of just this very, very small set of uh, different types of logical gates. There is a whole notation for that. I show here, show them to you for illustration. Um, and um, what's important to, to, uh, to remember now for the comparison with the quantum case is that all of these gates act on one or two bits at a time. There's one, uh, another distinction that, that I briefly want to explain uh, between reversible and irreversible operations. A gate is reversible if the output allows you to reconstruct the input. That's true for the negation, for the NOT gate. Yeah? When you know the output of a NOT gate, then you know what the input was. But the other gates involving two input bits are not reversible. Um, when you know, for example, that the output of an OR gate uh, is a one, then the input could have been one, one, zero, one, or one, zero. So you cannot un uniquely reconstruct the input from the output. In that case, the gate is irreversible. So you lose information when the information goes through the gate. That's an issue that we will, um, to which we will come back uh, when we discuss the quantum computer. And then let me reiterate this assumption, this implicit assumption that's uh, hidden in this uh, classical model, namely that there's, that there's no restriction regarding the copying of bits and inputting them uh, multiple times in multiple places. And that will be different in the quantum case. 